Are we live? Terrific. Thank you very much uh, for everyone for joining us today. And welcome to our first EP Week Lunch and Learn. Uh, and thanks to those who have also joined us via WebEx and the teleconference. And those who are now joining us live from wherever they are in the world um, using Ustream. Uh, we are extremely delighted to have a very special person with us today to kick off our EP Week Lunch and Learn series. And that person is Scott Mills. Uh, Constable Scott Mills is, or Graffiti BMX Cop, as he is known on Twitter, <laughs> is the social media police officer for the Toronto Police Service in the Corporate Communications Office. He volunteers as a Crime Stopper International Social Media Advisor, overseeing the operation of the organization's website, Facebook page, Twitter, and YouTube accounts. The key purpose of the Toronto Police Social, so the key purpose of the Toronto Police Service social media strategy, is to generate trust and goodwill between community members and their local cops. Through social media, Scott has experienced great success in strengthening the reputation of the Toronto Police Service in the community, preventing crime using tips generated from social media networks. Scott is in many ways a pioneer in the social media and emergency sphere, otherwise known as SMEM for those of you who are avid uh, Twitter followers. His success in engaging with online communities, connecting with youth, and using social media tools for crime prevention is changing the way public safety organizations communicate with their audiences. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Scott Mills. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, thank you very much. Just uh, for the people that are here in the room, and I don't, I'm not sure how many people are watching. I'm looking out right now at about one, two, three, four, five, six, about 15 people. And uh, I'm looking at three different webcams. <laughs> so I don't really know, as Scott Mills, Toronto police officer standing in front of me, who's watching this where. Um, and I think that needs to be stated right off the bat, um, that social media can be a little bit intimidating and a little bit scary for, for those that have been in traditional roles where we don't show our face and not know who else is watching. Does everybody agree with me on that? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not scared <laughs> um, to, to be doing this. And I want to kind of explain uh, what our systems are that we're using for streaming right off the bat because I, I want everybody in the room to understand kind of where things are going here. So could you come up, Randy? Um, these two cameras that are kind of looking at us down here, if you just come over this way, there's a camera right here that's coming right off of my, uh, my computer. The big Logitech camera there is actually not broadcasting right now. It's broadcasting out of the little uh, webcam on the uh, MacBook Pro. And that's going to Ustream right now. So what are you broadcasting right uh, now? I'm currently using WebEx. Uh, and it's something that we use internally within the OPS. And that's hitting people. I believe we have someone on the line from Thunder Bay um, in various offices across the ministry, essentially. Okay, yeah. so yours is going internal in to general. government people, yeah. and what is the purpose, our, our general mission of the people that are in the room here today? What What is our job? Um, do, do you want to go table? around the room and just yeah, say so who you who you are and what your job is? Is that is that okay? Yeah. Now, if if I were to turn my computer this way and you guys were to stream live out on that, would you be comfortable with it? No. Good. There's one, person, yeah, see, one guy, there's one gentleman out there that's that's uh, going to comb his hair, and there's another lady sitting at the back of the room, and she's saying, "No, don't do that to me. She's not comfortable with it. So we're not gonna we're not gonna turn the camera here. It's all about it's all about a comfort level, right? We're not. But but what we can do is, are you comfortable of saying your name and having uh, your title and your role being said if we went around the table? Yeah. Okay, for those that are comfortable with it, um, just, just say who you are and, and realize that this is get, getting archived. It'll be archived out on the, on the internet. And if you don't want to say, if you're not comfortable, there's no cameras on you, just, just skip by you. Just kind of nudge the next guy saying, I'll, I'll go next, okay? And the reason why I want to do this right off the bat is because we all have very important jobs. And social media is not just about Scott Mills in Toronto Police Corporate Communications when it comes to an emergency management issue. It's all hands on deck as quickly and as efficiently as we can. Are, are we all together there? Um, and this takes, uh, using social media for uh, emergency management takes a team effort. 
and it's my my opinion that this team effort needs to be more than just the police, more than just the ambulance, more than just the uh, the fire department. Um, every single human being plays a role depending on where you find yourself and what tools you have at your your hands at that very moment. Uh, you go into emergency management mode. <laughs> what, and, and that could be mean whether you're a child that's sitting in a school classroom somewhere that might be 10 or 12 years old or even younger that happens to have a phone on them at the time and uh, they start using it uh, they use whatever means is they're comfortable with. So I really think that the more connected we can be and the more that people out there know who each of us are that have leadership roles in it, the better going forward. And, and first off, we're gonna have to educate ourselves because if, if, we're, if we're talking to our friends up in, in Thunder Bay our, and our colleagues, that's a really good thing. But when I walked in here today, um, there was a, a little flyer that, that was up there and it was a, a lunch and learn and I'll, I'm just gonna hold this in front of the the camera so everybody can see it that, that's out there and I was quite impressed by the fact that Randy who's working here in this building at 25 Grobner Street actually titled this the MCSCS which is Ministry of Community Community Safety and Correctional Services, Community Safety and Correctional Services. Emergency prepared this week, 2012, May 6 to 12, and it says, "Curious about the role social media plays in emergency management," and it's got a whole bunch of police officers, Toronto police officers, and I presume that might be uh, from our funeral. I don't know. We found it online. F found it online. <laughs> I presume that that picture was probably taken um, at a march down the street for Sergeant Ryan Russell. Uh, at, at his funeral when he died in the line of duty um, last year. I, I'm just presuming that. But I can see a lot of police officers' faces in that photo, and they probably didn't realize that they were going to be on this flyer. <laughs> they probably didn't realize they were going to be on the internet. Right? So it's a reality of life that whether we give permission or not for somebody to actually film us and put us on the internet, we're going to be on the internet. <laughs> And that's, uh, that, that goes for emergency responders, but it also goes for everybody walking down the street. Th there's a good chance that with security videos and stuff like that, you're gonna be on the internet. And what was really, really neat for me was, uh, there's a quote on here and it says, the most powerful tool on a police officer's belt, their smartphone. And below that it says, S-M-E-M-T-O, with a number sign in front of it, which is a hashtag. And it says that that quote is, is quoted for Deputy Peter Slowly, Toronto Police Service. And where, and where Randy heard that and put that out uh, was at a lunch and learn like this a couple weeks ago at uh, University of Toronto organized by Patrice Cloutier where we had emergency management people like yourselves all around the world. And, he, and Deputy Slowly is, is my boss. Uh, one of my bosses, I've a lot of bosses in Toronto Police, but he's kind of a person at the tops, uh, deputy chief, second in, second in charge um, to uh, Chief Blair, and we also have Deputy Chief Federico, and uh, we have uh, uh, Jeff McGuire. So we have more than one deputy chief, but deputy chief slowly has really embraced the social media thing. And, and when he started talking in that room, I could just feel that he was going to say something that was almost categorized as revolutionary. <laughs> so what I did was I picked up uh, my little uh, smartphone here, <laughs> it's just an Android phone, and I, just before he went up I said, sir, do you mind if I stream you? So I actually turned this phone on and sat it on the table that I was at. We were sitting around and, and I just, it's not a very good quality stream because it's just off of this phone and it's kind of from a far distance. But the words that are now on that poster were echoed in there and I'm sure Randy went back and looked at that stream. Something else that was stated that day by Deputy Chief slowly was some pretty amazing things about some police officers that are friends of mine uh, they, that have been out on social media uh, and it wasn't because they took a phone and took a picture of themselves and put it out. Uh, you remember that during the G20 there was uh, an officer that 
kind of got the nickname Officer Bubbles, right? Well, well, Officer Bubbles is actually my friend, Constable Adam Josephs. <laughs> and uh, to me, he's one of the major voices of reason that we have when there's emergency management issues going on in the downtown core. And I've worked side by side with him on many occasions, and uh, he, he's, he does an amazing job. And what Deputy Chief slowly said that day at that event was, uh, my ears really perked up, and I said, he said, we failed Constable Adam Josephs that day as an organization because we weren't prepared for the social media. And, and this has affected the reputation of the Toronto Police Service. It's affected Adam personally as a human being and his family but he's still out there every single day serving and protecting. And one thing I did after that event is I ran into Adam and I said, Adam, Deputy Chief slowly said some really nice words in front of a huge audience at Hart House at University of Toronto the other day at lunch, at a lunch and learn. He goes, what'd you say? And I said, well, I'm gonna send you a link for the video and uh, you can watch it yourself. So he comes back to me another day and he says, Scott, when you're doing a video next, make sure you get a good camera. <laughs> he says, I can't even hear that thing. I said, turn it up loud and put headphones in. I'm doing that, but there's got to be a better way to do this. You got to get a, a better camera, right? And so that all is a part of the learning process and the connection. It really meant a lot to Adam Josephs that Deputy Chief slowly said those remarks. And he could actually, even though it's low quality, he could go and hear it. And those remarks were actually taken by Randy, and now it's leading up to this discussion that we're having right here. And how many other people in the room might have actually put a tweet out or had a conversation with somebody and are moving this whole kind of social media for emergency management forward? Okay, so I just, uh, um, if you want to go around the room, um, and say who you are, uh, we'll start here. And if you don't want to, just uh, put your hand up and look at the next person and we'll pass. Sure, I'm Stephanie Drummond, I'm an emergency management assistant. Uh, I'm Andrew, I'm the uh, student for uh, emergency management. Uh, I'll just speak up, just so sorry. Uh, my name is Andrew, I'm a student for MCSS. Uh, my name is Marcella, I am with the communications branch. Tom Angelides, I'm the Division Lead for Correctional Services. Sharon Berger with Emergency Management Ontario. Ray Lazarus, Emergency Management Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Graham with Analysis at Emergency Management Ontario. Michelle McCain, I'm with the Training Unit at Emergency Management Ontario. Lori Edelman Flood, Business and Fiscal Planning. Emily Jefferson, Private Security and Investigative Services Branch. Matt Kowalski, Program Development Unit with Emergency Management Ontario. I'm Sarah Howe, I'm an Exercise Officer with Emergency Management Ontario. Well, good. well thanks and welcome to everybody and I uh, look forward to being connected so that we can go further with this. Uh, my purpose today is to show you kind of how the Toronto Police Service are, you, are trying to use social media the best we can for both communications uh, mostly as well as investigations and uh, I'm, I'm going to try and, and show you that. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to run through a quick PowerPoint presentation at first so that we've got some key messaging. Um, this is an approved uh, uh, presentation uh, by the Toronto Police Service. Uh, it was from the ground up, basically. Th these were my words that weren't approved for a long time. And uh, now it's finally, it's official and approved. So what I'm saying here, I can say on behalf of Scott Mills, as well as on the um, behalf of the Toronto Police Service. My other role is a volunteer role with Crime Stoppers International, which is an anonymous tip service, Crime Stoppers, that's at the local level uh, throughout uh, uh, the world, but it's also got a global impact because there's about 1,300 local Crime Stoppers programs that are all community-run programs in partnership with their local police service and their local media, and we're hoping now social media to affect their mandate of helping to prevent, stop, and solve crime together. And in Canada, the anonymous, uh, the anonymity of a Crime Stoppers tipster is protected by case law 
of the Supreme Court of Canada since 1997. And that's a unique uh, piece of legislation that makes Canada very, very unique in the world. And uh, so essentially, uh, the way I see it is Crime Stoppers is a real great way to get anonymous information in for police officers in particular to be in the right spot at the right time to prevent some a tragedy from happening. Um, it's also got uh, very, very good uses so that you don't make uh, somebody that you might have a relationship with as a police officer into an agent or an informant uh, during some type of a, like a protest, for instance, like an Occupy situation um, where we're trying to facilitate lawful, peaceful, peaceful protests. So if you can get the trust that you can actually get anonymous information in right from your smartphone, either by calling the phone number 1-800-222-TIPS or by going to 222tips.com here in, in Toronto and submitting an online tip. Or you can text TOR plus your tip, the 274637, which actually spells out crimes. So you text TOR plus your tip to crimes. Um, uh, you can also go on a uh, smartphone application on your Android phone or on your iPhone and download it. And it's an entire system to get anonymous information in uh, and it strips all of your identifiers. Uh, it really can save lives. We can't go and arrest somebody, say for a murder. We had a murder here this weekend and the officer uh, of Toronto Police Homicide uh, Squad, Detective Sergeant Frank Skubik and I were working back and forth on social media uh, issues. And he would say, he would go out and say, call, call me, Detective Sergeant Frank Skubik at 416-808-7399 or email me at frank.skubik at on torontopolice.on.ca or tweet me or reach me at Facebook to be a witness to help solve this crime, right? He'll also say if you want to be anonymous to go and, uh, and leave the anonymous tip uh, using Crime Stoppers. So why I went through that whole spiel is, uh, is I personally see Crime Stoppers as a way to actually prevent crime and actually get get information in that is anonymous during a times of an emergency management situation that can really help us. Because we can turn that anonymous information into, uh, I guess, operational intelligence and get it to the scene commanders and actually make some decisions based on the anonymous information that's coming right from the ground. So the Crime Stoppers for me is a huge thing. A lot of people don't understand how it works. Uh, we've got our Crime Stoppers fundraiser dinner for Toronto on Wednesday night at Liberty Grand. It's all driven by community donations. And that kind of goes into the, the thinking of a lot of progressive emergency management thinkers is that we have to reach outside of the box, outside of our government agencies, because there's a lot of people out there that want to help. And we can use social media tools to, to affect that. And uh, Heather Leeson is an absolutely phenomenal person for that with uh, crisis mapping and things like that. Uh, that's a great example of, of everybody working together and somebody that's really passionate about using these crime mapping tools. Uh, or it's not crime mapping tools, it's emergency management mapping tools. It's, uh, and, and she knows what she's doing, as well as a whole team of other people. And we need to be able to tap into that resource and coordinate and work together. So that's why if we're on, on one of these internal systems where we're only talking to ourselves today in a live stream, we're not going to be able to reach somebody like Heather who's not an employee government. We're not going to be able to reach the officer that's out on the street sitting, sitting in their car right now at any time because it's a closed system. So I, I'm big for open systems, but we have to do it. There's four P's as far as I'm concerned. Purpose, we've got to have a purpose, which we do. We need to do it with process, so we all need to be on the same page and we need a strategy. And if we do do this all with purpose and process, we're, it's, gonna, it's going to lead to um, a payoff for us and endless potential. Endless potential. So the four Ps, that, that's my big thing. So I think I'll run through this messaging. That's the, the first slide. Uh, if I were to, to make this presentation today, instead of internetviolenceprevention.com, which is my blog, I would probably call it successandsafety.com. Because when you start using the words crime and violence and all this type of stuff, it really turns a lot of people the other way. And so success and safety, it doesn't really turn too many people the other way. So 
if you go successandsafety.com or internetviolenceprevention.com, that will get you to my blog, which has a lot of uh, policy-driven things. It's been a labor of love for about eight years for me. And uh, a man named Eric Jacks and Rob Cairns are community members. They're the ones who taught me how to do this and have done all the background work to get that blog in the shape it's in so that it's in WordPress, uh, it's easily shareable to people like you when I get the opportunity to share, and it's, it's really easy to put content on. So it's kind of an example of what I like to do going forward. This young man here, um, why I'm called Graffiti BMX Cop, uh, he's the epitome of, uh, of what, I, uh, what I envision. That is 75 Tandridge Crescent here in Toronto. That's a BMX bike park. This is a bike that's provided by the City of Toronto Parks, Forestry and Recreation Department. Uh, we always look at schools to, to go in as our, you know, our, you know, our in with the kids type thing. They're only, they only, they're only in 187 days a year. <laughs> what about all the other time? It's only Monday to Friday, nine to five, right? So this, the recreation departments, if we look outside of the box for stuff like this, that's legal graffiti art projects that are being done in, with kids doing really great stuff on BMX bike ramps and putting them up. And I really love this picture because it's a connection. That's just me. And I show up with uh, at, at an event with a bunch of police officers up in Rexdale, and they're, they're donating some computers and stuff like that. Um, the whole thing about equipment is, is you want to have equipment that's kind of functional and, and, and new and, and working and, and keep that modern and up to date. And when I show up with my MacBook Pro, they're all over me. And I love this picture because this young guy, he doesn't even know if he wants to sit with me. And he's got one hand kind of covering his eyes. Mm -hmm. I don't really know if I want to look, right? Because this is a police officer with a MacBook Pro. And I really want to see what he's got on his screen. Well, what I've got on my screen is I'm offering these kids success. I'm offering them the opportunity to actually partake in a BMX bike camp. I'm offering them the opportunity to do graffiti art, stuff that turns their crank. And in the background, I'm just sitting there with a trust the cops message. Reach out to me if you need me. Reach out to my friends if you need them, because I can't be everywhere all the time. And, and if you need to be anonymous, you can actually leave a Crime Stoppers tip. Here's how you do it. So that's why I say I try, my philosophy is celebrating success and promoting safety all the time. And I've got close to 3,000 videos on YouTube that kind of do that. And that's everything from homicide officers saying we've got a homicide victim here and we need information, here's how you get the information in, to um, other major crimes, to sexual assaults where we're actually putting an appeal for a suspect out, but we're also warning other women that this has happened and this is the description and information we have and be vigilant in an area. So it's always with purpose and process and it always leads back to success and safety. So if you can flip to the next slide. Oops. Sometimes if you just... Uh, so... Uh, back. Just back one. Okay. Uh, next. Next. Perfect. If you want to get a hold of me for Crime Stoppers, I've, we've branded everything CSIWorld.org. That is kind of the umbrella internationally for the 1300 programs. You can go on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and you can now go on Google Plus as well. Uh, CSI World is what we've kind of branded ourselves. So our, our handle um, is always kind of CSI World. But to make it simple, if you just go to the website CSIWorld.org and click on all the social media icons from there, you'll be able to get into our, our social media strategies. Go to the next one there. Um, this uh, profile right here, uh, facebook.com forward slash Scott Mills, S-C-O-T with one T, is how you reach me on Facebook. That's one of my Facebook profiles. How many people use Facebook in their real personal life? Do you use it for work? No? We really have some hurdles to get over there because uh, the other day when we were doing the uh, 
I've been involved in two Amber Alerts recently, and uh, we had so many shares on Facebook uh, trying to put that information out, and we ended up we ended up successfully finding the uh, the, the little child and, and the mother uh, on both occasions that, that we were doing it. And you should see how fast that that information goes on Facebook. But they're not you they're not quite at Twitter yet. But Twitter's kind of where everything goes down. Um, you need to be there uh, to, to do that. So if you, um, uh, I also have a page. There's profiles and pages. You can operate as an organization behind the scenes with a whole bunch of multiple administrators as a page. So if you're Emergency Management Ontario, everybody in the room that's got a role, once you got your back end going, could be an administrator on there and go out and talk as Emergency Management Ontario on Facebook and post. And they wouldn't know it was you as an individual you're talking on, as on behalf of an organization. Very, very effective tool. I'm Graffiti BMX Cop on my page. So I'm kind of like, just like CSI, CSI World was, just like Toronto Police is all Toronto Police for all the corporate communication stuff. Um, I'm Graffiti BMX Cop out there. Twitter, and these are my two favorite YouTube accounts out of the seven that I have, Toronto BMX and Legal Graffiti Art. If you go youtube.com forward slash graffiti BMX cop, I favorited all of the YouTube accounts that I have on the side, so it's one-stop shopping. So you can look at what, what does Toronto Police put on YouTube, what does Toronto Crime Stoppers put on YouTube, what does the Toronto BMX put on YouTube, what does the Legal Graffiti Art concept, what do they put on, they're all kind of there for you. This is the key messages that I'd really, really like uh, everybody to walk away after this, uh, hearing this, is uh, if you can go to the next, next slide, it breaks them down. This is what I firmly believe in. Adult mentorship in real life must be continued into the cyber world to prevent societal violence. Next. Um, we really need to look at a paradigm shift from a legal liability model to a policy-driven relationship technology approach to using social media, and, and that is essential for community safety. I've been saying this for so long, it's not funny, so I feel like a broken record, but we really do have to stop blocking social media. I, I'm standing in a government Ontario building right now, tried to plug into an internet connection, and I cannot show you what I want to show you on Facebook because the site is blocked. That is doing us no good in an, emerg in an emergency situation. Absolutely no good. We need to be out there and we need to be using these tools to affect our mandate. Um, start community building and preventing violence uh, using social media. Yep, go on to the next. Relationships and trust between adults and youth are key to the prevention of things like bullying, gangs, suicides, threatening bodily harm or death, sexting, online intimidation, terrorism, and mass shootings. What a simple bullying. If somebody's bullying somebody on Facebook and I'm friends with them and I'm a cop and I see it, maybe they'll come and report it to me or maybe I'll just see it in my mini feed and I'll be able to go out there and say, hey, not, not, not a good thing to say. Just like we would in real life as adults play our roles, we would go tell our kids that that is not appropriate behavior. We do the same thing on here. Um, why do I have terrorism there? Yes. You see things out there saying, oh, this is concerning to me. And when you're a police officer, you have your finger on the button about whose mandate that is to get that information to. Right? So there is things out there. Mass shootings I'm going to get to um, because people that were sitting in an audience like you are right now, um, a teacher actually um, saw somebody on their Facebook page. Um, that were saying they were going to go to a university campus here in Toronto and, and do a Virginia Tech style shooting and kill all the Jews. And I said, she called the police and, and they said, what's Facebook? And she'd seen one of these talks and she was friends with me on Facebook. She inboxed me, so private message to me saying, Scott, what do I do with this? I walked her through how to capture what was being posted because I can't see it because I'm not friends with that particular person. So she captures it all, gives it to me, I get it to our intelligence officers, they go out and they actually make an arrest. And, and I sleep better at night knowing that that didn't happen. <laughs> that's prevention, that's what I'm talking about. This is serious stuff. When you're, pre when you're pre preventing 
a Virginia Textile School Massacre because you're actually out there and approachable on social media and somebody's sending you stuff and you're able to turn it around and action it to save lives, now we're talking, right? So, uh, go to the next one there, please. Adults, who are adults? Who am I talking about? Parents, teachers, school administrators, police officers, social workers, justice system workers, correctional staff, we have, we have in our correctional institutions, and I'm, I'm a member of the Ontario Gang Investigators Association, and some of the, our president is actually the, the head guy for intelligence for, for the jails for the province. And, I, and I'm friends with, with, with these people. We talk all the time, and, and I know, I hear what they say behind the scenes and things like that. We, we as police will go out and arrest somebody for a serious murder. That person will get put in jail pending their, their uh, their trial and, and they're in jail for some time, but they're actually using social media uh, sites. They'll get somebody on the outside to actually use, give them their credentials, and they'll have somebody that they're talking to on the phone from their, on their phone privileges out in the community who's actually running their social media sites that's intimidating anybody that would be a witness on that case on social media. And we're nowhere really to be found to actually be out there and do it. So. I'd really, really highly encourage people to start thinking about how social media plays a role to prevent intimidation of witnesses in, in cases. Because without a witness, they, the person might be arrested for murder, and we may have all the evidence in the world, but a lot of that evidence is going to be eyewitness information. And if those, if those witnesses say that they're too scared to testify, that person that, that's an alleged killer is now walking, uh, walking free. And, and I don't think that's serving any of us to have a person alleged to have committed a murder to walk free because the witness is too scared to testify because they've seen and been intimidated. Uh, and social media is one of the tools that, that it's been using on that. So we need to think about this type of stuff. Um, social workers, I'm going to hit on this because just before I started this, a community member was actually emailing me and calling me on the phone talking to me about uh, a, a person that, that I'm, I've had emergency management issues with on social media before. Um, she has autism and uh, she's, she'll tweet out emergency management issues, suicidal issues on, on Twitter and things like that. And some police officer in the United Kingdom is seeing this saying, what do I do, where is this person? And it's not just limited to this particular person, but. There's community members that are actually reaching out to try and help people that, that are having issues uh, like that to try and stop those emergency management issues before they start out there. And so they're, they're trying to act, but they need us out there. They need, they need guidance, they need stuff. And, and when I've got kind of a social worker issue going on, as the police officer, I've got other issues that my role is to is to serve and protect and that encompasses mental health issues but not on an ongoing basis in social media i need to be able to call the probation officer or call the mental health worker the crisis nurse or say can you uh can you friend this person because th they're in crisis and they're talking about it on social media and and i'm not on duty right now and i can give you the background and stuff but i need somebody to be acting on it now does, does that all make sense and, and we're told as organizations, as, as now, a lot of us, no, you can't do that. For legal liability reasons, you can't go out and friend your clients on social media. And so all this happens in social media, and we get the mess on Monday morning, and what do we do with it then? It's too far gone. We're, 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 losing, we're losing everybody because we're not connected. So human resources to be put in to social media strategies and plans for social services is, is so huge. It, it's so necessary and, and uh, we really need to work together collaboratively on it. Um, this is another key message for today. Social media is a vehicle for sustainable connected relationships that create trust which fosters the reporting of concerns of violence to be dealt with by authorities before a mass shooting, bombing, bullying, gang involvement, suicide. I'm just going to touch on this. We touched about the school shooting thing, the gang thing. If you've got a kid that's living in an area where the police might know that there's a street gang operating in, and this young kid that's 12 years old is out on Facebook um, looking like they're part of that gang, but they're not. They're in a fantasy stage, and they're posting pictures that make them look like gangsters. They might be doing gang signs. Even the fact that they're just wearing a, a certain color of that gang 
and they're, they're, they're kind of posing on social media, um, that can give the perception to an, an opposing gang member that that person is part of that. And when that kid's walking down the street, next thing you know, there's a problem. And there's violence, and it could happen on our schoolyard. And we're sitting there going, "Huh? What's going? What did that all start from?" Well, something as stupid as what something posted on social media. So, if we can recognize that a young person, whether it could be our own kids, are putting thing, uh, images or words on the internet that generally are, are potentially going to harm their safety, um, and we can go out there as the adult mentors and say, "That's not a good idea," because. <laughs> You know, um, then we're then we're actually preventing some stuff. So we can go on to the next one. Um, the only quantitative measurement I can give you for the effectiveness of this is uh, in 2007 I was asked to go work in Toronto Crime Stoppers, and I'm going to give you some context to this. In Toronto Crime Stoppers, we had four officers traditionally that went out and went to schools and did talks about how to, how does two 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 tips work, and the chief took those four officers away. I don't know why. I don't. It was before my time. Um, but the bottom line is the community board of directors really wanted those officers back. So the chief said you can have one officer. And I was the person who got chosen to be that one officer. So the program didn't have any officers for about a year from 2006 to 2007. We were getting about 300 tips a month. One officer came in, started doing these presentations. We also had a hard time getting into the schools because we got handcuffs on our logos. No, no educator wants to have a presentation in their organization that has the goal of putting your kids in jail. That's why I really like the success and safety. So the officers spent a lot of time just banging on the door trying to get in. Um, when I came in, I said, how does one person reach 2.5 million people in Toronto with a Crime Stoppers message? How do we do it more effectively? So we ought to use social media. So thanks to Larry Straver and our Crime Stoppers, he was our coordinator at the time. He said, do what you got to do, Scott. And that's when we started doing this success and safety strategy in here. And from 2007 to the end of 2009, in two years, our tips were up at 1,000 a month. Went from 300 to 1,000 a month. And the good thing is some of these tips, a lot of these tips, and there's a lot more that come in. These are just the ones that the call takers and everybody kind of narrowed down to, this is a good tip type thing. So we do get a lot more calls on this. But uh, some of this information was preventive in nature. A lot of it, uh, also things were coming in like, uh, I know one tip that came in was a video that was on Facebook that was of uh, an honor killing and it was men beating women over the head, uh, one, one woman over the head with a cinder block. And all the, uh, all the men that were on the scene were had their cell phones and they were videotaping it. And somebody sent that link that had been on Facebook for four months and had 468 text comments on it to our anonymous tip line. So when we get that information, we don't even know where to start. I can't even tell where it's at. I don't know who the players are. And and when I when I went, I got to talk to Interpol in South Africa in, in 2008, November 2008. I showed this video to the room. There's 189 countries represented in that room, and the presentation was live, translated into five languages. And I said, does anybody know what to do with this? And what was the answer? Don't know. The, the secretary, if you can go to the next one there, the, uh, the secretary, keep going, please. The secretary general of Interpol, Mr. Ronald K. Noble, had flown in unbeknownst to me from New York to Johannesburg, South Africa for that presentation. And afterwards, he put this press release out. And what this said was that law enforcement worldwide needs to use social media. So I put that in there so that if you need somebody to reference, if somebody's not quite buying it and you are in your organization, you can go to this presentation, which is out there. It's openly accessible on the internet, as are all my presentations. And you can just say, you know what? I bought into what these guys are saying. They're using it to track fugitives. We need to use it to affect our mandate of emergency management. We need to, to affect our management of crime prevention, of, of whatever our role is, we need to we need to put social media into it. If you can just back up one of these, that'd be great. This is the, the old Toronto Crime Stoppers page. This is before it's gone to timeline. 
it looks a little bit different now, but there's the leave a tip app. There's a leave a tip app for um, Facebook pages that anybody can install for Crime Stoppers on their Facebook page. And now it's in a little bit of an app format. I'll show it to you live online as soon as we're done this presentation. Skip to there, please. Um, this is a really interesting teen suicide stop. Suicide's a huge issue. Um, and uh, this gentleman by the name of Dave Bradley is, is in, my, in my humble opinion, he's a hero. He is a school safety hall monitor at Earl Haig Secondary School. At the time when I did this presentation, which I did it up about a year ago, he'd stopped five teens from committing suicide based on what he'd seen on their uh, Facebook posts because he's friends with it. So now he stopped 13 the last time I talked to him now. That's unbelievable. That's a hero. And he's broken every single rule there probably is. <laughs> now everybody will say legal liability. Will he be a groomer or not? You know. Well, if we're not out there to see what the groomer is doing, we're not going to find the groomer. So I would rather have Dave out there telling the kids to wear, you know, wear your rain boots today because it's raining and it's day one and go to this period that day and here's a nice picture of you playing soccer after school and all that type of stuff and being out there. Oh, and by the way, we had a lockdown at lunch. This is what it was all about, blah, 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 blah. Our trusty uh, police officer friend showed up. Here's a picture of them. And, and you know what, if you need to reach them anonymously, you can do it via Crime Stoppers or, or you know, you can call them directly. And he's just chronically educating about anything and everything out there. But when he sees somebody uh, say something, you can go to the next one. This is his Facebook page. Um, I really advocate for separating personal and professional. Dave has not done that. I did not do that when I first started doing all this. I am a huge advocate for separating it now. Um, it just creates too much stress uh, if, if you've got everything all lumped together. Um, but uh, that's what Dave does, and he's got uh, 2,422 friends, and on his mini feed, he'll see certain things that are coming in, and he'll be able to act on them in a preventive way. So he'll be able to get somebody, he'll see a kid talking that there's a knife in a school locker, and there's going to be a fight at lunch. Well, guess what? You'll get the kid, the principal, the parents, go to the locker, get the knife, and then we don't have the fight at lunch. To me, that's a lot better outcome than me having to go to the school because there's a kid stabbed at lunch, and he's dead. And, and, and I've had to go to the school to, to, to lots of places so many times to do appeals like that with the homicide squad. I don't want to do it anymore. We can do better. So if you can go on to the next one there. Um, does anybody know what social alchemy is? I didn't know either. Uh, when we, we did a presentation with a graffiti artist uh, by the name of Jesse Pacho one day at uh, Humber College. Arthur Lockhart was the professor. And Jesse basically said, I met this guy, a uh, cop, on YouTube. <laughs> and I didn't really know what to expect, but I showed up for an event. And he turns out he bought me lunch, he bought me paint, we got along, and now we're friends. And so social alchemy is actually taking a bad situation or a bad outlook on things and turning it to the good. And uh, I love it. Examples of that through B me being graffiti BMX cop are Jesse Pacho. He's on Twitter, Art of Fade. Kedry Brown, I was with him this morning. He was with a, a gentleman that's experiencing homelessness, the City of Toronto official, a 14 Division police officer, and myself, all in one spot trying to actually get permission to do a graffiti art mural that celebrates and creates awareness for homeless issues. Like, that's way better than going under the bridge and vandalizing it. Yeah, that's that's with purpose and process, and that's all because of social media. Another guy, Jason Tajero, has done the same thing. He's a great kid on the BMX theme. And Nicholas Maharaj, he's known as Twitnik out there. Uh, he saw one of my presentations one day, and he's just been an amazing advocate. And there's tons of others uh, out there since. Yep. Um, this is the mass shooting that I talked about stopped. So we can skip over that one because we've already talked about it. This is emergency management at its finest. This is creating a hashtag to actually manage something that's going down in an emergency situation. So this is a one where I was the police officer sitting in corporate communications and I was actually um, tweeting in as graffiti BMX cop into We Day. <laughs> Which with, on that particular day, uh, Craig Kielberger had uh, 
his organization uh, in the Air Canada Center, and it was filled with kids on a weekday. And Kanon was there, and, and he was singing and stuff like that. And I was enjoying the vir being there as a cop through the virtual world. I wasn't there. And all of a sudden, I got word that came through our uh, internal uh, sources that there was a school shooting at Central Tech School. So my boss looked at me, Megan Gray, who's my boss at the uh, issues manager in corporate communications, and she goes, Scott, do your thing. And so first thing I do, grab the BlackBerry, grab a power source, external power source, get my partner who's managing the, uh, the traditional media, his name was Tony Bella that day, get, get mobilized, get into our uniform. Mostly Tony in uniform, I can kind of, it's, it's really helpful to be like this a lot of times and not, not me be in uniform so I can get different places. But, but that day we were both in uniform, we went down there. The first thing we did was, there's been a, sh tweeted, there's been a shooting at Central Tech School. Um, media police go to a certain area, we created the marshalling area for the media. Uh, we said follow number sign, hashtag CT gun for updates. Within 30 seconds of putting that out on Toronto Police, so I switched from graffiti BMX cop to everything Toronto Police. I'm in emergency management mode now. But I've got all these relationships for success in the Air Canada Center right now. I got kids going, hey, there's a cop tweeting in here. That's pretty funny. Well, some of the kids from that school are actually there that day, right? So now I'm in emergency management mode. All the media is following the lead. And everybody that's talking about the situation using CT gun, everybody can see what everybody's saying. Effectively now, this is, this is the heart and what we do, right? Emergency management. You've got parents that are now hearing from the source of your tweets, from the official source, that the school's all cleared, there's been one shot fired, no kids injured, we're looking for a suspect, what the description is, what direction of travel it is, and we're also looking for the gun. The school's in lockdown until the uh, emergency task force officers can complete their entire sweep. It's a big school, it's gonna be a while. Now, when mom and dad hear that they know the entire situation and it's all being led from here. And so once we get down to the scene, Tony goes over to talk to the traditional media. We both talk to the scene commander. We figure out what's going on, what we need to say and stuff like that. And Twitter becomes our number one emergency management tool. When we tweet, it goes directly to the social feed on the Toronto Police website. As well, you can actually put it out on Facebook from here so that it goes to the Facebook crowd and the Twitter crowd, and it goes right to the Toronto Police website. So, five more, five more minutes. That's an example of it. Go to the next one. This is kind of why I do what I do. Uh, I met Darcy Tierney in Omaha, Nebraska. She does the same thing I do down there. Um, I want you to think really hard when the next picture comes up if somebody somewhere playing their role using social media could have saved this kid's lives. Okay? You can go to the next one. Son of a police officer, Omaha, Nebraska. Looks like any one of our kids. Gets kicked out of school for something minor. He's angry. Goes home, gets his dad's service revolver, takes his dad's car, comes back. But before he comes back, he goes on his Facebook, and what's he say on his Facebook? He says, everybody that used to know me, I'm sorry, but Omaha changed me and screwed me up. And the school I attend is even worse. You're going to hear about all the evil I did, but that school drove me to this. I want you guys to remember me for who I was before I greatly affected the lives of the family's ruin. I'm sorry, goodbye. How many people, if that was your son or your neighbor, or a kid in your school are going to stand up and say, we need to get to this kid ASAP. We're all going to do something, right? It, it didn't happen. He went in, he shot and killed the vice principal. He wounded the principal. Then he went to a wooded area and killed himself. Now I have a tragedy that's never going to go away. And what I want you to think about is if we set the shell up for this to have happen, relationships and technology, is somebody going to save that kid's life because they see what they're saying on the Facebook? We really need to consider getting over all these hurdles that, that we've kind of created for ourselves. We can go to the next one. Um, another example, Congresswoman uh, Gifford wounded, 14 citizens wounded, 6 dead. 
This is in Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, January 2011. Within hours, Mashable, which is uh, kind of an online social media uh, Bible, I call it. It's like a news source for social media. They had a guide to the mass shooting on Facebook and Twitter within an hour. All the warning signs from me looking at it as what I'm talking to you about right here, I could see all the warning signs way in advance just by looking at what they'd thrown out in an hour. And I'd like, to, like you to think, could relationships and technology st strategy have prevented this? Let's go to the next one there, please. You think of Congresswoman Gifford here being shot and her husband's an astronaut every time you think of this. You don't think of those six people. One of the videos I looked at right away, and this was just out of interest, I wasn't part of the investigative team or anything, was a video of the alleged shooter right there. And I'll tell you, if a school teacher or a cop or a neighbor or a friend or somebody would have taken an interest in what that guy was saying way back when and engaged them in some type of a focused strategy, you might not be thinking to go and do that that day. I, I, I know it, it's not A to B, but this is an A to B. There's no ROI, there's no return on investment measurement that you can have for social media. Can you go to the next one, please? So what do we do? Make social media policy top priority. We need massive education and training. It can be accomplished with hope, with vision and action. We are the action. Uh, just being here today, being able to talk, having things like emergency preparedness week, having the dialogue, streaming the dialogue, good people talking to good people, we care. It can be accomplished. I wanna leave you with this. If you're sitting there saying, oh my God, Scott, I don't talk your language. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, please. This man here, Bill Bond, in 1997 was the president, or there was the principal in a school in Paducah, Kentucky. A gunman came in and three kids were shot and killed in front of his eyes. He made it his life work to say, that I will do everything I can to make sure this never happens again anywhere. So now he's the head of the American Principals Association and he goes out and he lectures all over the United States. He came to one of my talks for three hours and he ended up coming up afterwards and he was crying. If you can go to the next slide. He came up to me and he said, we are losing a generation of our youth I have to quit because I am no longer effective. He says, I, I, can't I can't talk your talk, Scott. And he's crying, it's a grown man crying. After, I said, do you have an hour? He said, yes. I said, sit down here, I'm gonna make you a Facebook profile, you're gonna do it with me, we're gonna make you a Twitter account, we're gonna make you a YouTube account, and we're gonna make you a Google Plus account. I didn't say Google Plus at the time, but I would now. He says, okay, I'll do it. One hour after he sat with me, stopped crying, smile came back. He said, I don't even have to change one slide of my presentation. Just ask people to be my friend in social media at the end. That's right, it's just, it's really simple. So you just go to the next slide. If you wanna be my friend in social media, I'd love it. Um, I don't, is that connected to the internet by any chance? Yes. Is it? Can you just, can I click out just for a second and just use this for one second? I want to show you what we're, I want to give you a taste of the real time right now. It may be blocked depending on the website. Okay. Yeah. I know, I know right now that Facebook is blocked because I've already tried it here, so I can't show you Facebook. Twitter's not. Twitter's right. not? No. Twitter's not. Okay, I'm just bringing you to the Toronto Police website. Um, we built this ourselves. This isn't going out and getting any fancy IT guys. This is our guys building it ourselves, okay? Uh, we, we did go out and we, we hired Lori Stevens to be our con consultant to go through our organization. And, and I have all the time in the world for Lori. Um, and, and what she did, she created what I call Bible, about this big, saying here's where social media can fit into your organization. And then we kind of took it on our own and, and we, we, we tried to make it work. It's a work in progress. That's just a little video of Damien Allen out at a kids event, right? Our, our uh, retired uh, Hall of Famer quarterback from Toronto Argonauts out there with kids. That's just us uh, two weeks ago at a flag football thing making a video. Anybody that gets uh, on Toronto Police that tweets um, and takes our three-day social media course gets on this loop here. 
So are you ready for an emergency? Have your 72-hour preparedness kit ready. For more information, click there. That's Nathan Daler. He's, he's our public order unit guy. And he's using social media, and he's putting relevant information out to our mandate right here, and he's not in the room because he's busy doing something else, right? So if you watch that, if there's an emergency, if there's something that went down right here, right now, and the police are being dispatched, I would get a back-end pin, and then I would go into emergency management mode as soon as my boss gave me the green light. So you got to get your back end uh, working. What we do on our back end is we have a BBM group called Corporate Communications Emergency Management, uh, basically. And so we, one of us picks it off, this is what's going on, and then we just start building the information. And all the proper people are on the back end there, and we all know our roles, and everybody just plays their role in an emergency and we pick a lead and we do it all the back end and then we come out uh, on the front end. And when I say on the front end, we come out on Twitter. Twitter's our number one hit hit quick and then we'll, we'll go into the Facebook here. So right here, um, this is our Facebook feed at the bottom. And so uh, essentially, if you want to, th this is yesterday's uh, Heroes in Life, Ontario Police Memorial, we streamed it. We streamed it live to YouTube with a guy, that's sit a community member that's sitting in Calgary, all, all using that webcam. We streamed the entire thing right to YouTube. Now, today it looks like uh, Google Hangouts, you can do that right to YouTube now. Uh, the, the, yesterday it was in beta stage, apparently today anybody can kind of do it, so I'm, I was hoping I'd maybe be able to do that here, but I didn't, so that's why I used streamed it, because I was more comfortable. But yesterday, just by using that webcam, you can watch the entire Ontario Police Memorial and the premiere on YouTube live, all done by a community member in Calgary in collaboration with a cop and my 12-year-old son and, a, and, a, and a eight community volunteers on the ground because it takes a lot of hands to get the right people in the right spot and all that type of stuff. So we just had our kind of own back end just like we've got our BBM back end for emergency communications, we had our own back end to make that happen. And that's just from my Graffiti BMX Cop Facebook page, and it's got all the links on it. So one last thing, I'm getting the hook here <laughs> from Randy. Um, legitimacy, uh, if you go connect with us here, you have to, there are people that like to personate our roles on social media. If you don't go out and claim your social media space, somebody else will go out and claim it for you and start impersonating you. So you really need to put some, some, some priority into this. And as soon as our officers uh, pass the course, the goal is we put their faces and what accounts they're on on our website. So your, your website is home for everything and people can go validate who you are and, uh, and what your rules are. How many people, I feel like a, how many, I think I got your interest. How many people are interested? Yeah? How many people are saying, this guy's out to lunch? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is lunch. <laughs> um, cake. Um, Randy said, I'm going to leave you with this thought. Randy said, Scott, we got cake. I've got a presentation out there that I did out in Vancouver at the Social Media Internet Law Enforcement Conference. A, a girl named Daniela Um. I'm saying this because I'm going to tweet this video at her. She was out protesting at Occupy and stuff like that. She reached out to me on Toronto Police Twitter and said, can I bring you guys some cake? Yeah, I love cake. So she brings cake in. She doesn't want to walk up to Toronto Police Headquarters. She's too scared to come in. Right? She's got her dad with her and her dad's an older guy and he doesn't want to come in either. And I said, Okay, I'll take your cake outside. Well, the next time I went in and we ate the cake. And the next time, and I showed, sent a picture to her on Twitter saying we're eating the cake. The next time her dad comes with her and they come into our office. It breaks down the barriers. Do you think there would have been a next time if we didn't eat the cake? You can go out there on social media all you want, but if you're not willing to eat the cake when somebody offers you the cake, you may as well pack up your bags and go home. Because it's, it's all about being able to trust each other and know that there's so many people out there that want to contribute and collaborate. Thanks a lot for your time. <laughs>
Uh, thank you very much for Scott for uh, showing up today and giving us that presentation. I think we all learned um, a lot of, you all got a lot of good points from that. Uh, for those of you who have time, I know we're running a little over time uh, and want to ask any questions, feel free to stay. For those of you who have to run, thank you very much.